Yo, what's up guys? We got the patch 10.25 patch notes and this is the last patch of both set four and 2020. So let's just get right into this. This is gonna be the patch for like three weeks or something like that. So it's gonna be a long patch just because I'm guessing we're preparing for set four and the new year's coming. So let's just get right into it. As a summary, we have Elderwood buffs, Mage, Vanguard, Fiora, Maokai, Wukong, Hecarim, Xin Zhao, Silas, Set, Talon, Yumi, and Last Whisper. And then we have a nerf to Divine, Diana, Lissandra, Jarvan, Warwick, Kane. And then adjusted by Evelyn, Lux, Aphelios, and Callista. So let's get into the changes. First, we're in the system changes. That's a pretty big patch. Bench overflow changes. So if your bench is full when you return from Carousel, the extra champion will be sold automatically at the end of planning. So I abused this mechanic in my how to get to diamond video, so you can't do that anymore. I'll leave a link to the clip on the side just in case you guys were curious as to what this is. But essentially, you cannot have more units than what your level is, plus whatever force of natures you have anymore. I guess the change makes sense. It was kind of like a fun mechanic to play around with, but I guess, yeah, it's... It's time for it to go, even though I'm sad about it. Base roll percentages are being changed. So level seven, we are going down on the one cost and increasing the four cost. So I think overall, this is a good change. Uh, the main barrier for level seven was not getting a uh, four cost chosen as often anymore. And that's why people are rolling down really often. Once they removed that, there wasn't too much of an incentive to do that. So I'm glad that they put a little more power into level seven. So maybe people have more incentive to roll on level seven. So this change I like so far. Now let's get into the traits. Divine damage reduction and true damage is going from 50% to 45%. Elderwood armor and magic resistance stat growth is going from 15, 25, 40 up to 20, 30, and 40. So that's a pretty big Elderwood buff at three and six Elderwood. I think this makes them back on the map. Keep in mind, this armor and magic resistance stacks up to five times. So you're actually getting 25 more for each level which is considerable. I think we'll be seeing a lot more Ash after these changes because yeah, it buffs the whole team too. It's it's kind of a good synergy. So they buff Mage at six Mages. So I'm glad they did that. No one really plays Mage. No one even plays three Mage. So it's good that they at least buff Mage a tiny bit, but I still don't really see Mage coming out into the forefront of the play just because of the small change. Maybe there's some Vagar build because they did buff Elderwood. I'm not too sure. I don't think this is enough to put them back on the map. Uh, with these changes so far. Maybe later we see a Vagar buff. I forgot if he is. Uh, maybe that puts him up. So Vanguard armor is being increased 250 to 300 at 4 Vanguard, 600 to 750 at 6, and then 1500 to 2000 at 8 Vanguard. So that is pretty powerful. 8 Vanguard, pretty much unkillable, even against the Last Whisper. The only problem is that stuff like Kane still exists, which is kind of like a pseudo Last Whisper without taking up an item slot. So that's why Vanguards haven't been seeing much play, but maybe with this change, we'll see a little more of them. Like, no one really plays them at all, even in early levels anymore. So looking into the champions, Tier 1, Diana and Lissandra were a bit too warm and bright in the moonlight. Other underperforming one costs are getting some love. So, ah man, I, I don't like the Diana nerf. I don't like the Lissandra nerf either. I felt like Moonlight was actually in a good spot. They weren't too oppressive and they weren't too weak either uh, because there's no guarantee that you hit it at an early point in the game, like all the four-star champions. So I, I can't agree with this at all. I felt like they were fine. I felt like you never really got oppressed by them. So they weren't like that strong enough to nerf, but all right, whatever. Uh, Fiora total mana is being reduced by 10. Her repost damage is being increased at all levels by 50, 100, and then 150 at 3-star Fiora. So that's good buffs for Fiora. Uh, maybe there's some like reroll duelist that she could fit in again, and maybe you want to get her 3-star in addition to Yasuo. Not quite too sure yet. It's always good to do, but she's not as critical as Yasuo, obviously. So if you don't get it, you just go ahead and level up anyway. So it probably doesn't change your playstyle at all. So maybe in some percentages of the game you go duelist, it'll be slightly stronger. Maokai buffed. Ooh, so they're buffing both Elderwood and Maokai. So he's going to have a ton of resistances. That means Maokai is going to be super good in the front line. Maybe that's like a little too much buff for Maokai. Uh, yeah, I could see Elderwoods coming back or like Brawler comms coming back because they run three Elderwoods still. Wukong crushing blow attack damage ratio is being buffed. So we might see more Bonky Kong. Who knows? I wonder what traits they're going to take out in set 4.5 and what they're going to add in. If you guys have any guesses on what that is or on what they're taking out, I'm thinking they're buffing Wukong because they might remove him soon. So let me know down in the comments what champions, traits, or synergies are being removed uh, in set 4.5. Let me know your guesses because I'm actually curious about that. So tier 2 Jarvin was a bit of a red flag for us. Remember how I talked about in my patch prediction last patch for 10.24b? 
I said Jarvan was still too strong, and they finally realized that, so I'm glad they did eventually. Uh, Aphelios attack damage, 50 to 45 damage. Fixed a bug that prevented Aphelios' turrets from firing during hunter trait activation. Whoa, that's pretty big. I didn't know that was a bug. Hmm. I saw some people playing Aphelios. I wonder if they knew that this bug existed, yet still played it. So that justifies the damage nerf because they fixed a pretty critical bug, in my opinion. Um, I think overall this might be a buff, right? If It depends how often this happened. I'm not too sure how often it did happen. Uh, Hecarim, total mana being reduced. Okay, they're buffing a lot of the Elderwoods. Uh, Jarvan, we talked about already. 20 more mana. That's quite a bit. Silas's Chain Lash is being buffed at levels 3 and 4. So they're trying to make people to go for Silas comps in Moonlight instead of just Diana and Lissandra. So that's good that they're encouraging it. I don't think people are going to do it because he's not really a carry, but it's good that they're encouraging it. Vi Denting Blows and Armor Reduction. It is being nerfed. Okay, so that's the first like Ash nerf I've seen. Actually, no, it's not because her total mana is being reduced. So she has, uh, she, so she's going to cast more often. I guess they just removed the hundred percent bonus just because vanguards are in play still. So they don't want like a pure counter to that. Uh, so I think overall this actually might be better because getting the ult off earlier, you get the damage off earlier, and like the reduction, it's not that big of a difference. So I think overall this is actually a buffer vibe. So tier 3, Evelyn's been all the type to roll the dice. Yeah, that's true. Evelyn's very good in the early game just because she's part of Cultus and she gets like at least one or two kills every fight because of her execute. So as long as she goes off, she's most likely to get a kill. They're reducing her execute multiplier by 0.5 seconds. And then her last caress damage is being increased a bit, I, I guess, to compensate for it. Just 100 at level 2 and 100 at level 3. It's probably not going to affect that much. Let's just do quick napkin math. 3 times 500 is 1,500, and then 600 times 2.5 is 1,200 plus 300. It's also 1,500. So actually, this is a buff, right? Because she's going to do more damage when they're not being executed. So she's actually getting stronger, which is very interesting, because I thought she was already pretty decent. Hmm. That's kind of weird. Well, I guess at level 1, she's getting weaker. So level 1 is weaker, level 2 is stronger. That actually makes a ton of sense because in stage one, I felt like a level one Evelyn was actually carrying a lot of games, but now that's going to be weaker, but she's still going to have a bigger boost in stage two with the same execute damage. Callista attack speed being nerfed, fixed issues that caused Callista to execute too early or too late. This included her interactions with shields, damage reduction, and damage amplification. So I guess overall, this might be unchanged for Callista. It depends on how often these bugs happen. I'm thinking they just adjusted her attack speed numbers to compensate for her buff uh, from the bug fixes, so that shouldn't change anything. Lux's chosen stat is now spell power instead of mana, so that's definitely a nerf because Lux, whenever you have a crowd control person, you want reduced mana, and also mana in general is probably like the better chosen trade for every champion. Uh, but her spell power, yeah, she doesn't do that much damage, so I don't think this is great for her. This is definitely a nerf. Xin Zhao attack speed is being increased, and then his Crescent Guard attack damage is also being increased by a couple percentage points. They really want to make Xin Zhao a thing. My guess is maybe they're removing her because they keep buffing him and he's like, obviously hasn't worked out yet. So yeah, maybe we're seeing goodbye to Xin Zhao. I wonder who else is going out if he is too. Yumi health is increased by 50. So that's a small change there. Tier 4, Talon buffed. Okay, yeah, obviously if you nerf Talon 50 times and 50 different ways, he's going to be pretty weak. So... You gotta buff him back a little bit after you do that. I'd prefer it if they nerfed him before in one to two ways, maybe three ways if all the nerfs were very small, but one of them was pretty significant in my opinion. And yeah, so you completely gut a champion. No surprise you're gonna have to buff him next patch. They're upping his damage by a bunch, so that's gonna be pretty cool to see. Warwick Primal Hunter Lifesteal is now being nerfed. So yeah, Warwick, he's, everyone plays Warwick this patch, right? So it makes sense that they nerf him and the Divine Trade. So those are perfectly fine. See, I like these nerfs. They nerfed him both slightly by 10%, so like a 20% change here on two of his levels. And then the other one was, I think, also like a 50% divine into 40%. So that's also like a 10% raw, 20% uh, relative nerf overall. So those are good ways to change it. So I'm glad that they finally realized that and didn't nerf him in like five different ways like they did with Talon. Tier 5, buff guy gets a buff fix. Kane gets a slap on the wrist. So Kane, yeah, Kane was pretty... 
He was pretty good. I don't know if you guys were playing him last patch, but like you put a bunch of items on him. There's some patches where he's just the best, and there's some where he's like the worst legendary. I, it's so weird because I think it's his damage thresholds. Either he one shots everything or he just doesn't, and then he just dies and gets stuck. Uh, but yeah, he was pretty strong last patch, so maybe this is enough to put him down. Set showstopper will no longer fail if something happens to set's target. Uh, during its animation. Now it will still deal the AoE secondary damage, but the primary target will continue to be unaffected. All right, that's good. Set's got so many bugs. Uh, they might remove him next set just because he has so many issues. Even though he's a really cool champion, like he bugs out like half the fights. Maybe they fixed all the bugs or are planning to as well. Items, this is making our debuff system consistent. Last Whispers being buffed. I'm assuming that's because of the Vanguard changes. When Vanguard gets buffed, you kind of have to buff Last Whisper. If not, Vanguards are going to be... Uh, taking everyone over. Other, the camera will now reset zoom level to default whenever the player changes views, both PC and mobile. All right, that's fine. Bug fixes. Galio, Zeke's Locket, and Chalice no longer buffs Galio, and Zephyr will not try and fail to hit Galio. I don't know if you guys knew, but you could actually buff your Galio by positioning in a certain way with Zeke's and Locket and Chalice. It's kind of funny, um, but yeah, they removed that, so that makes complete sense because this wasn't very intuitive to anyone. Uh, fix an issue where Lissandra's hair would stick out of the side of her head like a baguette. All right. Uh, fix a bug where Runon's hurricane could fail to shoot at enemies that were extremely far away. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, Runons is supposed to always trigger if there are at least one other target. So having this fail is like a pretty big issue. Fix a bug where Callista would reapply spell power to her execute, which resulted in overkill damage. All right, that's good. Fix an issue where Warwick's hunter proc would delay his next attack at high attack speeds. Wait a minute. So this fix issue is actually a buff then, right? It's very small. I'm assuming this happens very, very rarely, especially since he doesn't get to like super, super duper high attack speeds that often. I wonder how high it has to be. Uh, fix a bug where Warwick was not triggering on attack effects like Rageblade and Shiv on his hunter attacks. Very interesting. No one really builds Shiv and Rageblade. People prefer stuff like Quicksilver, uh, Runons, and Deathblade. But I guess if you go the Shiv route, it's going to be a bit better now. Maybe people weren't building it before because they didn't realize it was bugged. And it's hard to realize these things while you're playing the game just because so much is going on in a fight. And I'm glad if this is the case because I do like seeing diversification of builds. I don't like only being able to go one build path. So I, I hope that Shiv and Rageblade are actually viable options on them. Let's go ahead and check out the summary and what I think about it. I think Elderwood's going to be pretty strong. I think Ash is back, especially with the Maokai buff too. It just gives you a ton more health in the early game, which should snowball into your mid-game lead. And then Mages, doesn't matter. They are still probably pretty bad. Fiora is going to be useful in some duelist builds, but that's about it. Wukong, I don't think Wukong 3-star carry is back, but maybe he could be played once to get like a fifth place or something like that if you get a really high roll game. But I don't know why you would want to get a fifth place. Hecarim, again, more Elderwood buffs. Xin Zhao, he just never worked. Maybe he works now because they did a pretty sizable buff to him. He's really hard to tell because either he's going to be the best unit in the game or the worst. And in the whole entirety of set four so far, he's been one of the worst. Silas, uh, doesn't matter. Set, fixed a bug. Talon, needed those buffs desperately. I think he would be played again. Yumi is whatever. And then Last Whisper, it's the whatever buff because it's just compensating for Vanguard. Divine nerfs justified. Diana, Lissandra, I felt like this wasn't because I don't think that many people were dominating with Moonlights. Like, you can only play with the Moonlight Chosen, and even if you get it, it's not like a guaranteed top placement, and you still have to hit the four stars, and it doesn't happen all the time. Jarvan, finally, he's nerfed. Uh, Warwick nerfed good. Uh, Kane nerfed good, and then adjusted. Vi, I think, got buffed. Evelyn got worse overall, but she's worse at level one, better at level two. Lux got nerfed because she's going to ult a lot less now if you get the chosen Lux. It does. It shouldn't affect you in that many games just because it only affects the chosen version of Lux. Aphelios should be buffed because if he wasn't getting Hunter procs before, he should be losing a ton of damage. And then Callista, I think this one shouldn't change anything if they did their math correctly. Warwick is still going to be played, which is what I liked about the nerfs. Because three people were going for Warwick every game, and now with the slight nerf, maybe like one and a half will. Elderwood's definitely going to be back. 
Talon most likely will be back. And yeah, that's it. Everything else is probably still playable. I, I would try to actually avoid Moonlight now. I don't think it would be that worth it to go for it unless you get like the perfect start. Before you could go for it whenever you got a Moonlight chosen, but now you have to get like the perfect start maybe to to play this comp just because I think they just got so much weaker, right? There's just no other way of explaining it. It's like a 10%, 11% nerf on Diana orbs, which should mean something. But yeah, if you guys have any other thoughts on the patch, let me know down in the comments below. Go ahead and join our Discord too. We have a patch discussion section where you can talk with a lot of other players, many of them high level, but we have people of all levels in this Discord. So if you want to talk more about TFT or know more about other stuff that's going on, uh, definitely join that. Link's in the description below. I think it's discord.gg slash bunnymuffins. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. And if you guys are new, go ahead, hit the subscribe button as well. And if you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new, go ahead, hit the like button and share it with anyone who would be interested. But yeah, that's it from me. I'll see you guys for the meta snapshot on Friday. And again, this is the last patch of the year and the last one for set four. So if you guys enjoyed this set, go ahead, play as much as you can because things are about to change. So definitely look out for that.